Charles Oliveira, do Bronx, coming out there, just, just, just domination, pure domination over to Tony Ferguson that we have not seen ever, I don't think. I, I mean, at least that I can recall. I mean, that was just, wow, what a performance. Big question everybody wants to know, you know, is he going to be champion in 2021? Is he going to be able to beat the likes of Connor, Poirier, Gaethje? Is he, is he going to be the champ next year? Is he, is he on that path? Mr. Wells, what, what say you? Ah, oh, man. If you want to talk about is he on the path? You ha If you watched the fight last night, I think that kind of answers itself. Because he looked like the best welterweight on the, I mean, the best, best lightweight on the planet. Excuse me for bumping him up 15 pounds there for a second. But no, he looked incredible last night. And we're talking about against Tony Ferguson, the guy, the boogeyman of the division, right? You know, El Kakui, right? He made El Kakui look like he was 65 years old in there. Like he didn't belong in the same cage with him. Like that was just sheer domination from beginning to end. And I know a lot of people were talking about they wish this was a five-round fight. <sighs> Tony Ferguson got lucky it wasn't a five-round fight because that would have, whoa, boy, his health would have taken a severe hit more than it already did last night. Um, I mean, so just Tony like just looked old and not, and I mean, I'm not sure how much of that was purely just because of how good Charles Oliveira was just shutting everything down. Right. But he looked amazing. And it's like, you look at the other top five in the division right now. I don't see how you can confidently say that anyone in the top five right now in the lightweight is going to easily beat uh, Charles Oliveira. It's not going to be an easy out for any of those top five right now. Yeah, I would agree with that 100%. I mean, it, it was a combination last night of Oliveira just looking the best he's ever looked and Ferguson not quite looking himself, I would say. And it's hard to say because you've got a lot of people out there saying, oh, the Gagey fight affected him. It's messed him up. That's possible. And and it's, you know, I, I wish this would have happened almost after a Ferguson decision over anyone else going into this fight because then we would know very clearly how much of this was Oliveira versus how much it might have been uh Tony being affected by the Gaethje fight but e even if Ferguson was affected by that Gaethje fight I mean everything Oliveira did was slick I mean those transitions on the ground were insane the you know pure dominance he, he had everything covered Tony was tough. I mean, that arm bar, good God, that was, people were looking away. I didn't look away, but I was like, it's going to snap. I'm about to see some guy's arm just snap yeah, in half. I was definitely looking. I was waiting. I was like, where is it going to snap? Where is that particular point it's snapping at? I was trying right. to find yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was ridiculous. And then he came out, he threw a couple punches with it. Clearly was affected a little bit, but he was still throwing. Pure, yeah. you know, Tony Ferguson. And some great scrambles to get out of, you know, some things on the ground he was he was going for he was going for it the whole time he didn't stop looking for submissions doing different things but Oliveira was one step ahead of him every single you know minute of that fight and now you look at the top five in the division and you know now I'm gonna selfishly say that I am very sad that Habib has retired because now I am like giddy about a possible contender against Habib where I'm like oh this could be really good um, but you know, and who knows if he comes back or not, but right now I'm in the camp of him not coming back. So I'm going to assume he's not in this mix, but the rest of the division, uh, it, he, he's got problems for everybody. I, if he gets you on the ground, uh, the, any one of those top five guys is in deep trouble. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. And, you know, I love that you mentioned the fact about Habib because that was also my train of thinking as well. Um, We've seen we've seen Habib and Eric against Justin Gaethje. We've seen it against Poirier. We've seen it against Connor. They tried and tried and tried and tried and tried to fail again, and now nobody wants to see him in there against Ferguson. So, and I mean, I don't. Do you think Dan Hooker would give Habib a run? Not right now. Charles Oliveira, though, <laughs> after last night, that fight is so intriguing, man. It's so intriguing, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get it if Habib sticks to his word and stays retired. Although. You ask Dana White, it doesn't seem like he's ready to admit that just yet. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna, you know, put too much hope into that being a possibility. What I will do though is 
kind of prepare myself for who's going to be fighting Charles Oliveira for for an interim belt if that becomes a thing. If they don't really really want to make it, you know, a vacated belt just yet, who's going to be up against him? Because you got Connor and and Poirier going at it here soon, and he just took out number three in Ferguson. So hey, the only thing that makes sense numbers wise is him and Gaethje. But does Gaethje get another crack at an interim title? Like I don't know if you want to do that just yet. But I'll say this, man, because this is what's the most important takeaway from, um, I think, Charles Oliveira's performance last night. He is a guy that, you know, as DC mentioned it, uh, I believe, on the broadcast last night, that he really kind of grew up with the promotion, right? This man has eight losses on his record. Eight. And he just took out Tony Ferguson in the most impressive fashion ever. Like, Justin Gaethje, you know, box up Tony Ferguson over the course of, you know, however long that fight lasted, I forget right now. But um five he, I think it was almost five rounds. Yeah. Just about but yeah. Five rounds at five and some change, like four and a half and some, or something like that, right? Yeah. 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 So to do that to Tony Ferguson the way he did, like it wasn't just like stand up, like it was taking him down and like shutting him down on the mat and just, you know, like you said, almost snapping his arm off. Like that was we just haven't seen that happen before. We've we've seen a lot of people box tony ferguson up i remember like interviewing kevin lee years ago years and years ago before kevin lee was in the, in the top 15 and you know i asked him to run down you know the top 15 guys and i meant like and how would he fare against him and i asked him what do you think about you know tony ferguson he's like oh he's got homer simpson defense like everybody touches tony ferguson's chin but nobody gets him to the mat like that and just controls him and dominates him right we've never seen that before so for Charles Oliveira to really be coming into his own lately, like he's on this Tony Ferguson like win streak now, right? <laughs> Where he's just running through everybody and it's insane. And he looks like he's untouchable. And all of that momentum just tells me this guy is going to be in a fight for some sort of title, the next fight or the one after that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's hard not to say throw him into a title fight in some form or fashion right now, right? He's he's the one guy outside of the mix who didn't challenge for a belt. Poirier, McGregor, uh, Gaethje, all had their crack at Habib. All of them failed. Dobronx never got that shot. He's now on an eight-fight win streak over an insanely impressive performance against Tony Ferguson. It makes sense to give him a crack at the belt. He's a new face in there. I think you... Whether it's an interim belt or whether it's the real belt, providing Habib is, is done and they they go that route, I think it makes sense for him to get the next shot. The only hiccup again is you've got, you know, Poirier versus McGregor already booked and Gaethje's waiting in the wings, which you could do another interim title uh, or title fight with Gaethje, but does he really deserve deserve it? Um, but, but you know, it, it's one of those things. If, if he's put in a contender match and they make some sort of interim belt or or actual vacant lightweight championship fight without him at this moment personally i'm going to be pissed because again <laughs> he's he's the one dude in that top five who hasn't already had a crack at it it makes no sense after this performance not to put him in the mix there and just throw him straight in no 100 percent. and one point i didn't i forgot to mention you know as i was talking about him growing up with the ufc if you tuned into a Charles Oliveira fight and that was your first one last night, you would think he was an undefeated fighter. The fact that he has eight losses is just like a, it's so far from reality right now. Like he, like what? Like eight losses? This guy? No way. And he did that to Tony Ferguson? No way. No way. So he, he just looks like a completely different animal ever since 2018. You know, his last loss was yeah. in 2018 to Paul Felder or 2017 to Paul Felder in December. So he's just, He's obviously learned. He's been put through the paces. He's paid his dues. He's grown up. He's he's hit this stride. You know they call it his prime right now. He's he's definitely in that. So they gotta they gotta reward it while it's there because the UFC missed the boat to do that with Tony Ferguson. You know they let him rattle off this ridiculous win, win streak. And yeah, they tried to book the Khabib fight fifty times and it fell through every single time, and that kind of sucked, right? But they still ne never really managed to get him into an undisputed title fight. And that kind of sucks for him because he's not going to get there at this point. It doesn't seem like unless if he hits some sort of ridiculous, miraculous turnaround in his next fight. But judging by what we saw in his last two outings, I don't think that's going to happen. 
So, yeah, no, I, I think you're right there. I think, unfortunately, you know, Ferguson's kind of missed his shot. It's not to say he couldn't come back, you know, take some time off, come back looking completely renewed and doing crazy stuff ends up coming back in there. He's still close enough at the top. I think that, you know, I think one more loss, pretty much you can call it a wrap. I think if he bounces back well, he keeps himself in that contention, you know, perennial contender. He can kind of work his way back in. Uh, but but here's here's the big question. Again, we've talked about the path to the title for Doe Bronx is there. But in 2021, will he be a champion? What is your prediction, sir? Yes. Ooh. One word answer. Yes, he will be a champion by the end of 2021. If he if he does not if he is not already wearing the belt, like say by June, you know, depending on how how fast this thing progressive progresses, let's say let's say Habib is retired. Boom, they figure that out by like February. Okay, we know what happened between Connor and and Poirier. Let's say Connor wins, they're going to try to find somebody for Connor to fight. That's got you know surging, you know. There's nowhere else to look besides Charles Oliveira. And right now, I would say Charles Oliveira, Charles Oliveira beats Conor McGregor. You know? Oh, and of course, that's going to be that's gonna be depending on what type of Conor shows up against Dustin. Now, if Conor shows up and dust his, uh, dust uh, Poirier in like 30 seconds, then I'll change my mind. <laughs> but <laughs> recency bias, recency <laughs> bias, Charles Oliveira is beating everybody at 155 right now. Everybody. Not named Habib. <laughs> I mean... Uh, it's again. I'm, I'm going to go the complete opposite way with you, uh, with with recency bias, and here's why. The one question I have left after watching that Oliveira versus Ferguson fight, the one question I have left is what happens if Oliveira's chin gets touched. That is his one Achilles heel that's always really held him back. If you look at his losses. Where he's been on, you know, started to build up some win streaks, looking good, and all of a sudden, if, I believe Felder was a TKO or a KO, right, against all of like Felder doesn't really go out there and usually get TKOs or KOs either. It was, you know, Oliveira's chin is suspect in my opinion, and that's a a major problem for guys like Gaethje, Poirier, and especially Conor McGregor. I I think Conor McGregor versus Oliveira, it's gonna be the that question of. Does Cotter touch him? And if he does, does Oliveira go out right away? Because that would be my one one thing there. Because, I mean, Cotter's... A lot of people want to rag on Cotter about, you know, his, his loss to Habib, which, yes, fair enough. It was domination by Habib. I'll say that all day. But he didn't look helpless, you know, in terms of takedowns and things of that nature. He, he definitely showed enough skill there that I think he could probably land a punch or two, because he did land a punch or two on Habib. I think he could land a punch or two at Oliveira. And the question is, is does that chin hold up? Because if it doesn't, then it's, you know, that that's always been Oliveira's Achilles heel is his chin. So right now, I'm, I'm going to say he's not a champion. I'm going to say he gets a title shot, which he rightfully deserves. But I'm, against Connor especially, I, I can't see it. I can't see it personally. I knew you'd be a Connor fanboy. I didn't think it would take this <laughs> not, long for it to come I'm out. Not a Connor fanboy. My gosh. Oh, my goodness. Make, I knew sure it. I knew it the whole time. This is a great time to remind you. Make sure you like and subscribe to this video. Let us know if you think Oliveira is going to be champion in 2021. If he would beat Connor McGregor, if he would beat Poirier, if he would beat Gaethje. Let, let us know what you think's next for him as well. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm not a Connor fanboy, man. Nothing would would make me happier than seeing Oliveira just straight up take Cotter down, submit him, and just submit himself as that dark horse of the division no one saw coming, and all of a sudden he's champ. But I just, I got to go with the facts, man. But I don't know. I don't know.